Five or six months passed away in the pleasures of the country, when death attacked the intendant so suddenly that he had no time to reveal the secret of their birth to his adopted children, and as his wife had long been dead also, it seemed as if the princes and the princess would never know that they had been born to a higher station than the one they filled. Their sorrow for their father was very deep, and they lived quietly on in their new home, without feeling any desire to leave it for court gaieties or intrigues. One day the princes as usual went out to hunt, but their sister remained alone in her apartments. While they were gone an old Mussulman devotee appeared at the door, and asked leave to enter, as it was the hour of prayer. The princess sent orders at once that the old woman was to be taken to the private oratory in the grounds, and when she had finished her prayers was to be shown the house and gardens, and then to be brought before her. Although the old woman was very pious, she was not at all indifferent to the magnificence of all around her, which she seemed to understand as well as to admire, and when she had seen it all she was led by the servants before the princess, who was seated in a room which surpassed in splendor all the rest. My good woman, said the princess pointing to a sofa, come and sit beside me. I am delighted at the opportunity of speaking for a few moments with so holy a person. The old woman made some objections to so much honor being done her, but the princess refused to listen and insisted that her guest should take the best seat, and as she thought she must be tired ordered refreshments. While the old woman was eating, the princess put several questions to her as to her mode of life and the pious exercises she practiced, and then inquired what she thought of the house now that she had seen it. Madam, replied the pilgrim, one must be hard indeed to please to find any fault. It is beautiful, comfortable and well-ordered, and it is impossible to imagine anything more lovely than the garden. But since you ask me, I must confess that it lacks three things to make it absolutely perfect. And what can they be? cried the princess. Only tell me, and I will lose no time in getting them. The three things, madam, replied the old woman, are, first, the talking bird, whose voice draws all other singing birds to it, to join in chorus. And second, the singing tree, where every leaf is a song that is never silent. And lastly the golden water, of which it is only needful to pour a single drop into a basin for it to shoot up into a fountain, which will never be exhausted, nor will the basin ever overflow. Oh, how can I thank you, cried the princess, for telling me of such treasures. But add, I pray you, to your goodness by further informing me where I can find them. Madam, replied the pilgrim, I should have repay the hospitality you have shown me if I refused to answer your question. The three things of which I have spoken are all to be found in one place, on the borders of this kingdom, towards India. Your messenger has only to follow the road that passes by your house, for twenty days, and at the end of that time he is to ask the first person he meets for the talking bird, the singing tree, and the golden water. She then rose, and bidding farewell to the princess, went her way. The old woman had taken her departure so abruptly that the princess Parizade did not perceive till she was really gone that the directions were hardly clear enough to enable the search to be successful. And she was still thinking of the subject, and how delightful it would be to possess such rarities, when the princes, her brothers, returned from the chase. What is the matter, my sister? asked Prince Bahman. Why are you so grave? Are you ill? Or has anything happened? Princess Parizade did not answer directly, but at length she raised her eyes and replied that there was nothing wrong. But there must be something, persisted Prince Bahman, for you to have changed so much during the short time we have been absent. Hide nothing from us, I beseech you, unless you wish us to believe that the confidence we have always had in one another is now to cease. When I said that it was nothing, said the princess, moved by his words, I meant that it was nothing that affected you, although I admit that it is certainly of some importance to me. Like myself, you have always thought this house that our father built for us was perfect in every respect, but only today I have learned that three things are still lacking to complete it. 
These are the talking bird, the singing tree, and the golden water. After explaining the peculiar qualities of each, the princess continued, It was a Mussulman devotee who told me all this, and where they might all be found. Perhaps you will think that the house is beautiful enough as it is, and that we can do quite well without them, but in this I cannot agree with you, and I shall never be content until I have got them. So counsel me, I pray, whom to send on the undertaking. My dear sister, replied Prince Bahman, that you should care about the matter is quite enough, even if we took no interest in it ourselves. But we both feel with you, and I claim, as the elder, the right to make the first attempt, if you will tell me where I am to go, and what steps I am to take. Prince Purvis at first objected that, being the head of the family, his brother ought not to be allowed to expose himself to danger, but Prince Bauman would hear nothing and retired to make the needful preparations for his journey. The next morning Prince Bauman got up very early, and after bidding farewell to his brother and sister, mounted his horse. But just as he was about to touch it with his whip, he was stopped by a cry from the princess. Oh, perhaps after all you may never come back, one never can tell what accidents may happen. Give it up, I implore you, for I would a thousand times rather lose the talking bird, and the singing tree and the golden water, than that you should run into danger.